You know, so far they've been doing a fantastic job with Cody, but man, I was watching the show and I just thought, this Vince just has absolutely no idea what he's doing. Like, if he's got a card, if he's got like a list of matches that have been announced, like, he can come up with stuff to do between then and the pay-per-view. But dude, we had a pay-per-view last night. Yes. And Becky Lynch had the match won. Yes. But the pin was stolen from her. Yes. So tonight, we've got a multi-woman match to determine a, cha- a challenger for Bianca, and Becky's and not in the match. Not only that, you got people like Dana Brooke. She's wrestling Dana Brooke, in, which we'll get to in a moment, but I got more. Later, we have Riddle. He's getting a shot at Roman Reigns. Even though the last time they were in the ring together, Roman Reigns pinned him. And the last time Riddle was in the ring on SmackDown Friday, he was pinned by the Usos. Okay, now I can explain this. If he is getting a shot at Roman Reigns, that's that's a matter of mind changing because he was absolutely not. I'm not a shot. talking about what really happened. I'm talking about booking a show. Yeah, like this but, doesn't make any sense. But I mean the the yeah. Well, okay, you're you're talking about week to week sense, but yes, week, I'm weeks. talking about if you're a person watching this show, you're wondering oh, why is this geek bullies. in a championship match? We've We've been we've been through this for years. It never makes week to week sense when you always change your mind. It's how about never... how about these Usos? These Usos need challengers, but they don't want to ever beat the Usos under any circumstances. So already nobody believes that anyone can beat the Usos. So we have a championship contenders match with the Street Profits, but the only way they're allowed to win is by the crook of their whatever. They they win via countout, and it was by the skin a... of their teeth. And it wasn't even a strong count. No. I mean, it, it, okay. Okay. That. Um, I mean, like, I don't care if they're going to do that match at at a pay per view or they're going to do that match on TV. That finish is was so weak to build a championship match. It's not even funny. Plus, here's the other thing. Okay. It's like when they have these guys do these non title matches. What do they, what do they call them? The championship contender matches um, to build up the title matches. The idea of doing this match and beating the the champion is to show that you can beat that the champion. someone might actually beat the Usos. Well, exactly. At least you, to show that you can beat the champion, and it's like these fluke countout wins. Like if they had titles, you know, changing hands on countout, perhaps you could go. Well, they beat him on a count, but the rule is in WWE is that the titles even change hands on a count or a disqualification anyway. So these DQ and count out wins that you see wouldn't even be the title change if they happened in the title match. So it's like it's it's just Yeah, I mean from a logic standpoint, it's just completely illogical. But And but then it's, it's, but and it's then always, but it's always illogical. Let's talk because, about the women where where bro, how hard is it to build up a challenger? So before Hell in a Cell, what did we have? A multi woman match. To yep. determine who was going to get a shot at Hell in Cell, which, by the way, got screwed up because two of the women walked out and they did something different. But the and, plan and, was... And, 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 what about Friday SmackDown? We that's just... what I'm getting to here, Dave. We had a multi-woman match for Hell in a Cell. We had a multi-woman match to determine a contender for Ronda Rousey. We have a multi-woman match on Raw to... Like, can you figure out a way to book so that you've actually just got somebody who's in line? Instead of every single time, we just have to have another random multi-woman match to determine who's getting a shot at the champion. They have that with guys too, it's, dude. It, it's it's a way to get a it's a way to do a TV match, and it and it's the way that they've taught the audience that gets them out of building anyone's momentum. I know all because, of this, but my point they is, this have, sucks. They, hey, I see the same thing on every show. Then I got one more. Okay, so the Judgment Day. Turns on Edge. Yes. Even though the night before, they won because Edge pinned Finn Balor. Yes. Like, and now Finn Balor shouldn't is- Finn Balor have pinned Edge? And then they're like, well, we don't want to be with this old fucker that can't win, so we're going to beat him up and go with Finn Balor. Instead, he won. Yes. It, God, made- help me. Yeah. If, 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 if I had known that they were going to beat Edge... It should have been pinned in the match last night. There's no, absolutely, 100%. If this if this was going to lead to this, and that they should have, you know, and then there's there's a logical reason. But, you know, whatever, they, they want to surprise people. And, you know, what, you know, I mean, look, this is just what they do. 
and it's always going to be what they do. And, uh, you know, I kind of like here's the, the, the key to this, though, is that now, granted, they're not really growing, but they're not losing. And for years, they were losing for, for probably the last 10 years. They were going down, 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 down. And now they're pretty much staying even. So they've basically trained. Yeah, you hit the bottom of the barrel. I mean, it's nice to be at the bottom of the barrel where you have two million people that are willing to spend a lot of money on your product. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You're still you're winning network on Friday, and you're yeah, that's all fine. But here's the problem, Dave. If this if there were some competence involved, you'd probably be doing a lot better. Without a doubt, without a doubt, without a doubt, if they had, if they had, look. They'd make stars, right? Stars is what draws. Stars is what builds the company up. Well, you'd have you went stars, in there, and you'd and, make more and, money on merch, and you'd sell more tickets, and like people would talk boy, about you like you were cool, and like there's a lot of cool stuff that could happen if you were better. Of course, you don't have to just be as bad as possible because you could do it. Well, there's there, here's the here's the other problem with that. I mean, it's not a problem, but it's just it's just the the basic psychology. The psychology is. You know, like, you know, we go back, let's, let's go back 10 years, okay? When every month they had to sell a pay per view. And, and like, if they fucked up in the build, they paid for it because they made less money. Like, your economic, you know, one of the things that made, you know, wrestling in the past, um, good or, and the promoters smart. Is that if they were dumb, they went broke. If they were smart, they made money. So you kind of learn over the years, you know, especially these promoters that were in the same position for 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, it's called the strong survive. And well, when you're this rich, the weak survive. Well, there's no. You that know, doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's like the, the whole thing is, is like they are guaranteed success and great success no matter what they do. So. That impetus is there, and even like the learning of the audience that you had to, you know, you had to learn your audience to a certain degree in the past because you would just learn it based on the fact that I booked this main event and I drew 5,000 people, and I drew, booked this main event and I drew 8,000 people. And over the course of the years, you kind of go, well, this doesn't work as well as this, and this works better than this, and the people buy this gimmick if I protect it. So let me protect it as opposed to just throw it out there for no rhyme or reason and, and all this. So you had promote, you know, you had these promoters who learned their city and learned their audience like St. Louis. And, you know, it's not like Sam Mushnick every show was a sellout, but he promoted for 40 years and he had way more big ones than small ones. And when he had the small ones, you know, it was like a message from the people that we do not accept this. And he would never do those matches again. Like, if you had a match that drew poorly, even if you did a, a a finish that led to a rematch, he would go like, I'm not doing the rematch. I'm changing my mind. Because your economic survival, your profitability, and everything like that was dependent upon drawing very well. And if you had a match that you thought was a throwaway and a contender who you thought was not really that good, and he went in there in a championship match and sold out, you changed your mind. Whereas now, it's like they don't change your mind because there's, it's, it's, it's all irrelevant. So, um, and, and that's... Actually, you know, they change their mind every day, but it's about useless But it's not, but, but, but it's not from it's learning. Th- something that has nothing to do with anything. But it's not, for, it's not from learning from a bad house. Of course which, not. Yeah, I mean, Vince was still doing that in... in um, at least in the early 2000s, because I know it, because I was talking to him, and, and when, a, you know, when a bad pay-per-view number came in, and he was not an excuse maker. That guy was not an excuse maker, which I also find very interesting, you know, in the sense that, you know, I mean, like, I mean, he was, he was the anti-excuse maker. You know, everybody, because everybody in wrestling was excuse makers, as you know. You know what I mean? It's always, the weather's too cold, the weather's too hot, the, it's raining, it's snowing, it's like, it's, it's 80 degrees, it's, it's like, Late in the month, you know, there's, the fair's in town. How can we outdraw the fair? You know, there's always an there's always an excuse. I mean, there are legitimate excuses, but but most of the excuses when it comes to live events, you know, I mean, his big thing was is, you know, which is, and he wasn't the only one to say this. I mean, Mushnick did and Bosch did and all, but it's like, you know, I booked a main event that the people didn't want to see, and I learned from it. And now, the fact is, is that. 
there's no, you know, there's no main event people don't want to see because if you say we've got SummerSlam, just as an example, and we book a main event that isn't that good, the reality is is that it's pretty much going to draw about the same number of people because it's SummerSlam, and when it's, um, I mean, they did sell out Hell in a Cell, and Cody, you know, Cody and Seth obviously helped it because it was a late draw. So it does it. The idea of the match helping and all that is not completely dead it's it's largely dead but it's not completely dead but um you know like the the you know it's just a different dynamic they're gonna make ridiculous money no matter what they do so you just you focus on different things you focus on just you know com providing content getting content out there and just kind of like vince's whims because you know i mean that's what it is it's vince's whims and 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 a writing team that the smart ones know Vince's whims, and they give Vince the things that will make him happy, or at least try to, because he's the one, you know, uh, signing the checks. And that way you don't, you know, if he thinks you're good, he's not going to fire you. And, uh, you know, that's the product that we, we got now. But, you you know, look, you're, you're well, right. It could be, it could be, it could be way, way better um, if they did logic. But, but, the, but, like, you know, the whole thing is, is the motivation is not there, because guess what? They're going to have record profits this year. And they are monkey proof. They're idiot proof. You know what I mean? I and I've said this for years. It's like they have now gotten to the point where they're idiot proof. You know, WCW was never idiot proof, and because they were run by idiots, they went out of business. Um, Vince, you know, like if if Eric or or any of those people in WCW were getting four hundred seventy million in television revenue and two hundred million in streaming revenue for their pay per views, I mean. They could have booked that crap that they booked that turned people off with those, you know, in, in, in that period, and they'd be in business forever. Well, they're out of business. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.